Hey guys, today I want to talk about Image Comics' Eric Larson, or more specifically, the Death of Truth era in the comic book industry. So for those who aren't aware, diversity in comics was attacked yet again over the last 24 or 48 hours by Michelle Perez of The Pervert over at Image. And this time, his military service was attacked erroneously, falsely, as well as he was linked with a domestic abuse charge, something along those lines. So Michelle Perez wrote, Meyer being charged with domestic violence, assault in the states of New York and California, Meyer's dishonorable discharge. For whatever reason, this shit never got mentioned once with regard to Meyer's behavior towards women and sexism in general, which doesn't really bode well if you're talking about protracted abuse. Now, Michelle Perez went on to eventually backtrack once the legal ramifications started to be known where you can't just make things up out of thin air about someone. Uh, Diversity in Comics showed that he had an honorable discharge. He put it online for anybody to look at and dispelled any notions about any sort of ridiculous domestic violence sort of stuff. But what happens is these people put it out there. They just throw things against the wall they do not care about the truth. And this will tie in later with some of the other screenshots you'll see. The BuzzFeed hit piece, the hit piece on John Malin, obviously, Ethan Van Skyver. All these things, Bleeding Cool, Rich Johnson, the way that they twist meanings, that they blatantly lie about things. In the case of Michelle Perez, this is one of the worst things that I... I think I've ever seen in terms of the comic book industry. Now, <laughs> the wishing that diversity in comics would die in an IED blast, IED blast was pretty darn bad, but now they're just making up stuff just completely false. And then you have guys like Eric Larson over at Image who continues with the IED blast, splitting hairs all the time, bending over backwards, bending into intellectual pretzels to find a way not to clearly and concisely state, hey, this is gross. Even if you don't fire the person, you could say, this is gross. This is not what we stand for. We have a business relationship with this person. We will talk to Michelle Perez, and we will make sure that there is a certain level of professional decorum that is not violated here at Image. Unacceptable. But he can't do that. So he tweets, I was, I was tagged in uh, an exchange that he eventually took part in. He says, it's all about false equivalencies. It's not about common sense. Image should apologize because somebody that does a book there said something I don't like to somebody in some forum somewhere. Pointless and stupid. Now, as I have pointed out before, and obviously many others, that umbrella guy, Diversity in Comics himself, and others, uh, this is not what it's about. Uh, again, this is the same person, Michelle Perez, who called all veterans crypto fascists and wanted him blown up, wanted Diversity Comics blown up. Now, I eventually, I usually don't get involved in this sort of stuff, but I wanted to see how he responded to this. And also, the thing with Eric Larson is the more that he sort of plays word games, semantics, at some point in time, I'm talking over his head. The more unreasonable he is, the more ridiculous he seems to objective observers. They will see this and they will see, wow, this this is bad. I don't want anything, any part in this. Someone was like, why are you even interacting with this guy? He's being unreasonable. Yeah, it's because the people that I'm talking to, I'm not talking to him anymore, really. It'd be nice if he would listen to reason, but if he wants to play ridiculous, partisan, petty games, neutral people, people that are just coming across this, the comicscape, the save comics movement, They'll be like, wow, uh, Mr. Larson is ridiculous. So I said, it's been fascinating to watch Mr. Larson twist himself into intellectual pretzels to avoid the issue of basic human decency. What is your opinion of a writer who falsely and knowingly claims a combat vet like Diversity in Comics was dishonorably discharged? That's what I wanted to know. Uh, an employer, anyone who has a business relationship with somebody else, they could weigh in on these things. Now, he did later, uh, as I've said, uh, as I've cited in my Marvel Death of Beauty era video, I will once again cite Bishop Robert Barron in his book to lay a fire on the earth, 
I will also be citing Exploring Catholic Theology by Bishop Barron and Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life in this video. So we're going to get a little heady here. As I said before, with my more secular viewers, if you don't want to think of things in terms of objective truths, those sorts of things completely, uh, then that's why I'm I'm mixing in the Thundercats here. So when you make truth your number one priority, the thing with truth is, is you can see above and around and below all sorts of issues in ways that someone who's a blind ideologue or someone who doesn't value truth, they, they can't see it. So you get essentially, and that sounds kind of cheesy, but you'll get where I'm going, the sort of omens you will get sight beyond sight. So that is what we need in the Save Comics, the Comicscape movement here. We need to always make truth our number one priority because they don't. And when we do, we will be able to see the world more clearly. Now, what happened along the way? We're talking about broader cultural issues here. Bishop Barron, Barron says, classical moral thinkers considered the ethical act in terms of its purpose or finality. What makes an act good is its orientation towards its proper end. Thus, since the end of the speech act is the enunciation of truth, speaking a lie is morally problematic. And since the end of a political act is the enactment of justice, unjust legislating is unethical, etc. So for people that believe in objective truths, people who value truth, you're not going to lie. You're not going to do something like Michelle Perez and knowingly, falsely just say, hey, I heard it's out there that diversity in comics had a dishonorable discharge in. Oh, yeah, uh, he had this wife, got a divorce, and the reason why is he beat her, something along those lines. You're not going to do that. That is problematic for people that value truth. Again, what happened along the way? This is not, again, not just religious. If you don't like Jordan Peterson, it's not just psychological. You could go back to all sorts of philosophers and you can see what happened along the way. So Bishop Barron says in Exploring Catholic Theology, page 69, William of Ockham held that freedom is best understood as a kind of indifference of the subject in the presence of competing values. Someone is free in the measure that she hovers above the yes and no and makes a choice on the basis of no compulsion either interior or exterior. This interpretation of freedom as choice and self-expression, theologian surveys Pin Pinkers calls the freedom of indifference. The Occamist theory represented, however, a major departure from a classical and biblical understanding of liberty. On this earlier reading, liberty is not so much self-expressive choice as the disciplining of desire so as to make the achievement of the good first possible and finally effortless. The more classical interpretation, Pinkers called freedom of excellence. So what does that mean summed up in a way that anybody can understand? So say you're into football. You believe that there are objective truths about the rules of football. They are laid out for everybody. Everybody knows the rules. There is a process for changing them. Again, we're not necessarily, if you don't want to think about this in religious terms, Think about it in football or baseball or any sort of game, uh, any sort of business. There are rules. And the, the reason why I pick your favorite football player, so some sort of running back, mine was Marcus Allen as a kid. The reason why that person excelled at that sport is because of the rules. The rules allowed for excellence. Once you know the rules, then it immediately sets ways in which you can excel or you could you could stand out. Once you adopt a moral relativist point of view, all the rules are out the window. You could do whatever you want. That is not freedom according to guys like myself. So at some point in time, the culture, which would obviously include the comic book culture and guys like Eric Larson, adopted a moral relativist point of view. They don't like rules. They don't like guys like us coming in and saying, hey, proper business acumen tells you that you are not supposed to behave this way. Common sense business practices say you don't 
associate with people that wish veterans died in ID blast after they come back from common co combat. Common sense, basic human decency says if you make up lies about a person who got an honorable discharge, who is a good father to his children, who just happened to have a divorce for whatever reason, you're not allowed to just make up lies and say that that person beat his wife or something like that. Um, but they don't like that. They don't like that we are essentially imposing rules of good conduct onto them. They want to be able to do whatever they want. And as I've said before, once you decide that there are no objective truths, then whatever you decide in that moment is permissible. That's what they do. Now let's get on to Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Again, this is pretty long, guys. But I, I want to break this down so you know exactly what's happening. As I said earlier, I want to give you the tools that you need in order to have, quote unquote, the sight beyond sight. So Jordan Peterson says in his book on page 209, taking the easy way out or telling the truth. Those are not merely two different choices. They are different pathways through life. They are utterly different ways of existing. You can use words to manipulate the world into delivering what you want. This is what it means to act politically. This is spin. It's the specialty of unscrupulous marketers, salesmen, advertisers, pickup artists, slogan-possessed utopians, and psychopaths. It's the speech people engage in when they attempt to influence and manipulate others. Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, page 209. Again, People that value truth, they're not out to manipulate people. They just want to know what's going on so they can properly live their life. They are not going to lie about combat veterans over a comic book. And if somebody is on the outside looking in and they see that happening, they will say, hey, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. Don't behave that way, especially if you're in a business partnership with somebody. But Eric Larson can't do that. The writers at BuzzFeed can't do that. The writers at Bleeding Cool don't do that. Jordan Peterson goes on, page 210. Someone living a life lie is attempting to manipulate reality with perception, thought, and action so that only some narrowly desired and predefined outcome is allowed to exist. I.E., or I should say E.G., we want diversity in comics off the table. We want him out of here. We are sick of dealing with him. We will do anything by any means necessary. The ends justify the means to take diversity in comics out. So going back to Peterson, he says, a life lived in this manner is based consciously or unconsciously. That's key there. On two premises. The first is that current knowledge is sufficient to define what is good unquestionably far into the future. The second is that reality would be unbearable if left to its own devices. So these people have decided we need to get rid of diversity in comics. We know for a fact this guy is evil. He is wrong. He is bad for the comic book industry. We will do anything. Scorched, scorched earth, earth policy to take him out, even if it means the complete death of the comic book industry as we know it. Victor. So Jordan Peterson goes on. It's the last one, guys. It says, Victor Frankel, the psychiatrist and Nazi concentra concentration camp survivor who wrote the classic Man's Search for Meaning, highly recommend that book, drew a similar social psychological conclusion. Deceitful, inauthentic individual existence is the precursor to social totalitarianism. Sigmund Freud, for his part, analogously believed that rep repression contributed in a non-trivial manner to the development of mental illness. And the difference between repression of truth and a lie is a matter of degree, not kind. Alfred Adler knew it was lies that bred sickness. C.G. Jung knew that moral problems plagued his patients and that such problems were caused by untruth. All these thinkers, all centrally concerned with pathology, both individual and cultural, came to the same conclusion. Lies warp the structure of being. Untruth corrupts the soul and the state alike, and one form of corruption feeds the other. Again, Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, page 215. 
well said. Now, back to Eric Larson. He eventually got back to me. He says, my issue with you is you don't seem to understand that image should not have to keep track and apologize for things said by creators elsewhere. The offending comments that weren't in comics we published. It's kind of like this. And then he uses a DVD. The views expressed in this DVD not necessarily represent the views of Sentai Filmworkers and or its subsidiary and affiliated companies. Okay, we got you, Eric Larson. So, I said, you didn't need to track anything. Customers alerted you to reprehensible comments made by a writer, one possessing a business relationship with Image. You, for whatever reason, lack the moral clarity or courage to publicly acknowledge astonishingly foul rhetoric by Michelle Perez. And that, my friends, is the truth. That is what Eric Larson doesn't want to acknowledge. And that is what many, many, many people in the comic book industry, we know all who they are, the Dan Slots out there, the Mark Wades, the Max Bemises, all these people, the editors that call us idiots, they don't want to acknowledge the truth. Just some guy weighs in, says, wishing someone dead is one thing, Lying about them commit domestic violence and their discharge record with the explicit intent to damage said person's reputation is different and technically liable. One's defensible, the other is not. Again, you can say, oh, Michelle Perez, in a fit of rage, was angry and just said, oh, I wish, you know, so-and-so would die or, or something along those lines. Someone could say, it didn't mean anything, especially if the person backtracks and say, listen, I was angry. I didn't mean it. I apologize. With these guys, when you get an apology, as that umbrella guy has stated in his videos, it's always a non-apology. There's always some sort of snark involved, and they say, well, I'm sorry, but that you misinterpreted what I had to say, or I'm sorry that you essentially are a snowflake. Again. Uh, Michelle Perez says, I can believe a person is a piece of shiza, but I do not want it said that I am slandering the guy and any and all of my thoughts with regard to dishonorable discharges are more out loud musings than anything else. Anyway, F that guy. So again, not really an apology. Uh, lying is really out loud musings. The truth is really... Uh, Fluid, fluid truths, gender fluid truths, something along those lines, or trans truths. And that's how we get these other hit pieces. This was the inverse piece not too long ago. Coming up now, Comicsgate is Gamergate's next horrible evolution. We obviously had not too long ago, January, Rich Johnson, the hit piece on John Malin, where he essentially linked John Malin, who is on record as saying he originally voted for Obama at least in 2008. He's uh, a moderate, linking him to the alt-right. That's something that Mumra would do in Thundercats, just making up lies, doesn't care, just basically that's downright evil to do something like that to a guy, just making up stuff. Eventually, John Malin had to come in and say, hey, I'm sick of your hit pieces. Other objective observers come in they say to Eric Larson exactly what I was saying earlier. He could deny this all he wants, but there are neutral individuals that are coming in that they're seeing this on Twitter far and wide. This guy says companies with ethics and good business practices disavow partners all the time. Look, here's the deal. You aren't fooling anyone. It's insulting everyone's intelligence that you keep playing dumb. We know, we all know the game, including you. Be an adult man and drop the charade. But Eric Larson can't because he's an ideologue. Eric Larson can't. When you when you got the, as in Jordan Peterson's book, he talks about his pen of light. Again, if you don't like Jordan Peterson, liken it to Thundercats. You got the, the sword there. They don't like the light. When you shine it on them with words, whatever it is, your rhetoric, when you expose their lies, they hate it. And they lash out at you like ghouls. And uh, so this bringing things kind of full circle here, Diversity in Comics says earlier today, it says, anyone notice how little infighting there is in Comicsgate? I mean, there is some, of course, but of all the online communities I have seen in 20 plus years online, it's definitely 
the most peaceful and friendly. I would concur with that. And the thing with the City of Comics, the Comic Escape community, is that pretty much everyone is on the same page with they want better comic books. They want solid storytelling. They don't want ham-fisted politics shoved into them. They want to see creators behave like professionals online. If someone says something you don't like on Twitter, ignore them. There's a mute button. That's all you need to do. You don't need to call people racists. You don't need to call them bigots. You don't need to call them homophobes. Just because they don't like Iceman being turned randomly gay after decades of having none of that in, in the comic books at all, you could just ignore them. On multiple levels, people just want some sort of modicum of professionalism. So again, one of the reasons why Comics Gate or the Save Comics community is generally pretty peaceful. People stay in their own lanes if someone doesn't particularly like someone. They're like, hey, you do your thing. I'll do mine thing. We're both, we both want better comics. And there you go. Diversity in Comics has the most subscribers, so he is taking the brunt of all the blows, the lies, people that needlessly take shots at him. It really kind of irritates me because whether you like him or not, he gives everybody else within the community cover. Essentially, they're going after him. They're trying to dig through his entire life and finding ways, things that he did when he was like a 19, 20, 21 year old man. I'm a completely different person now closing in on 39 than I was when I was 20 years old or 25 years old or even 30 years old. The point, again, is if you seek the truth all the time, if you make truth the focus of your life, you will see things that other people can't and will help you whether it's dealing with the comic book industry, whether it's your own personal life, whether it's your business life, you will have, again, sorry if it's cheesy, the sight beyond sight. No, no matter what you want to call it, that's what it boils down to. You will see things, you will see the world in ways that other people cannot. So anyway, guys, that's about it for now. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks to all my Patreon su subscribers, my followers. I got two new ones the other day. I did a secret, secret broadcast was experimenting with that, and I definitely need a lot of work on that, but I'm finding ways to get you guys exclusive content. Thanks for that. Thanks to all my subscribers, new and old. I appreciate it, and I will see you guys soon. See ya.